Hi, this is like take 574 of graphing. So hopefully I can get this right now. I'm trying to figure out how you can see me make a graph. So this is our graph, graphing activity page one. If you notice, there's a Y in the upper left-hand corner of the graph because graphing rules that we follow, rule number one says, use a pencil. So everybody needs to make sure that they have a pencil. So here's a pencil. Rule number two, you need to make sure that you label your graph with an X and a Y. Mm -hmm. So here is your graph. You wanna label the X axis and the Y axis. You also wanna label your data table so you know where you put your labels. So I'm going to put an X right over depth in meters and a Y right over the number of bubbles. So please do that with me. X over depth in meters and Y over the number of bubbles. So I'm gonna put it up like this so you guys can see it. You're also putting an X in the bottom so that you have an X over here as well. So you see the X? It's opposite. Okay, so the X is here and the Y is up here. All right, rule number three is asking us to please place the words in the appropriate positions on your graph. So you put an X on top of depth in meters. Make an inference, why do we do that? Because you wanna place the word depth in meters on the bottom along the x-axis. So please write depth in meters along the x-axis now. Thank you. Depth in meters. And you wanna make sure you write meters because that is the unit that we're using, meters. And you could abbreviate meters with a little M if that's helpful to you. All right, that is along the x-axis. What word is going to go along the y-axis? The number of bubbles in minutes. Please write that along the y-axis. Number of bubbles. Make sure you give yourself enough room because you also need to write an appropriate scale. You have to make sure you put minutes there so we know the time that is used. All right, we have them both. The next step is asking us step number four. You should be looking at your yellow notes if you don't have this memorized. Step number four is asking us for appropriate scale. So look at the numbers. Depth in meters. The range goes from 2 to 30. So we need to make sure that we represent all of those numbers up to 30. However, we don't have 30 boxes. So how do 30 numbers go along there? You need to make sure that your numbers are equal intervals. So there's only 20 boxes on the bottom and I have to represent 30 numbers. So if I have 30 numbers and I need to represent 20 boxes, I have this little fraction. I have 30 numbers and I need to represent 20 boxes. So what could each box represent? Probably one and a half, right? 30 divided by 20 is one and a half. Who wants to count by one and a half? Me, not me. I definitely don't want to count by one and a half. So what would be the next best thing to count by? We can't count by ones. It's not big enough. Not count by one and a half. So that's not fun. So what should be the next best scale that we count by? Yes, you're right. Twos. So we're going to count by twos along the bottom. Depth and meters. Please count by twos. So start with zero. Zero. Two. Four. Six. Eight. 10. This is what it should look like along the bottom. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Do you see how I put these little tick marks? I'm extending the line. So that line represents number 2. Make sure you put your numbers right on a line. This line represents 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. If you'd used one and a half, it would go all the way to the bottom. So if you wanted to, you can you could use one and a half and go to the bottom, but we didn't want to because we don't want to count like that. So we counted by twos. So I'll give you a second. Pause the video if you need to. Copy the scale on the bottom. You're counting by twos. Are we going to use the same scale on the top? Probably not. Why? Because the numbers range. The smallest numbers are 10 and the largest numbers are 29. No, 45. So we still have the same number. 45 is the largest number, and we still have 20 bubbles. So now what? Can we count by twos? No, we can't count by twos because we're only going to get to number 40, and we have to get to 45. So what would be an uh, appropriate scale to count by? 
For some reason, we always get stuck with counting by this. We're not counting by ones, we're not counting by twos, so what's the next best number to count by? Well, what is 45 divided by 20? It's like two point something. So you can't count by ones, you can't count by twos. So what's closest number is going to be threes. We have to count by threes. All right, let's count by threes. So this is zero, three, six. So watch what I did. You have to make sure that each line has a number. Nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. You should all know your three times tables. 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, and I'm going to go up to 48. 48 is the number I'm stopping at. I usually go like one or two behind. Okay, so now what? We made our scale. Now we need to take the numbers and place them on the scale. So our first number is going to be 2. And our second number is going to be 29. So how do I do that? 29 over here? How do I do that? Okay. We're going to go along the x-axis first and then up the y. So the first set of numbers is 2, 29. We call this a coordinate. This is our first set of numbers. I wrote it on the side for you. That means you're going across the bottom, start at the origin, which is over here, and you're going to go up across to the two, and then up to the 29, okay? Across to the two, and up to the 29, and make a dot like this. Across to the two, start at the zero, go across to the two, and up to the 29, got it? The next numbers are, I can't see that, five and 36. You're gonna go across, start at the origin, across to the five, and up to the 36, and then make a dot. Go over to the five, up to the 36, and make a dot. That's the four, that's the five, 36. It looks like this. And you continuously make dots until you're finished. So the next one's gonna be over to the 10, up to the 45. Go over along the x-axis, up to the 45. Over to the 10, up to the 45. Over to the 16, up to the 32. Uh-oh. Now it's going down. Over to the 25. And down to the 20. Oh, no. Over to the 30 and up to the 10. So we have an, an, a direct relationship. And then all of a sudden, it became indirect so you're no it's, this is not cyclic because it doesn't repeat there's not a repetitive pattern it's only increasing then decreasing do you see that it increases to a certain point and then decreases all right so now we're going to answer our questions question number one what is the independent variable well do you remember mix and try with an x and a y where do we write mix mix goes with the x so put it in there mix all right so what does that mean that means my manipulated independent variable is on the x-axis. So what's on the x-axis? Depth in meters. That's the independent variable. The independent variable is the one part of the experiment that you have the power to change. Depth in meters. What is the dependent variable? The dependent variable is going to be the thing that responds to the depth in meters. The dependent responding variable is going to be the number of bubbles in minutes. There's something wrong with my graph. Hold on a minute. Can anybody tell what's missing? Look at the graph. Something's missing. Yes. Rule number seven, we never did it. Rule number seven is to make a title. So you have two choices. Remember what the choices were. You can write the effects of or the relationship between. So the effects of depth in meters on number of bubbles or the relationship between the depth in meters with the number of bubbles. So you decide what you want to write. I usually do the effect of. The effects of depth. And then I put a little meter on 
the number of bubbles per minute. In minutes. Ta-da! So the sentence always starts the same. The effect of, and then whatever the manipulated variable that goes first, on whatever's on the y-axis goes second. So you have to make sure that you use these words. The effect of depth of meters on number of bubbles. Everybody got that? There's one more question at the bottom. Don't forget it. It says, make a conclusion about the graph. So you're allowed to write anything you want. Draw one conclusion. You're making an inference. So what happened at 10 feet? All of a sudden it started to do what? Decrease. So it increased. The number of bubbles increased to 10 feet, but then at 10 feet mark, as soon as we started getting lower and lower and lower into the ground, lower under the water, what happened to the bubbles? Then they started to decrease. So 10 meters was the best depth anything greater than 10 meters is not so good you have to write your own conclusion okay you're going to follow that same pattern when you do the next page you have to pick one page to do i did this one with you so if you pick this page that means you are not independent yet okay you're gonna to have to do the whole packet at some point in your life so try to do another page by yourself okay have a good day